Hey guys, Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we are with part 17 of the Sherman RC tank build. Um, I have a confession to make to start with. I made about four segments of this video this morning. It is now Wednesday night, uh, Thursday morning, very late. Um, and I, in between filming this and waiting for paint to dry and stuff, or Mr. Surfacer to dry, I did my little book reviews and the little the Meng hood review, this little kit here. So basically did all that and then uploaded and everything and then cleared everything off my camera and then realised I'd cleared off everything that I recorded for part 17. So part 17 basically consisted of showing you about me, I put these plastic rods in the back of the hull here where the poles are for the antenna that you, we don't need for um, 2.4 gig. It talked about um, how I actually uh, made some adjustments to these holes in here because I had to sand the front of these um, towing eyes down because I got these sticking out slightly further than them. So talked about that. We got all these parts off the sprues, cleaned them up um, and put Mr. Surfacer in the sides of the air intakes here because the sides of them were really not flat at all. And then we also talked about how to get the the cast rusty effect on the exhaust, as you can see there. Out of the kit, they're just flat, plain plastic like, like this is. There's no texture to them at all. So we added this texture and I talked about how to um, how to get that texture and how to break it down. And, you know, if you want to get like a cast texture or you want a rusty texture. So these I've done that like that with a sort of pretty rough texture and then um, I've painted them green. Reason being, as I also explained so much in part 17, I don't, th in part 16, or the videos, I, sorry, part 17 that I videoed this morning, is now gone, um, that I don't think the exhaust can be seen because once the hull goes on, then you can't see the exhaust anyway. But we may do some work with these and sort of rust them up a bit. But I did basically show you how to do that. I'll have to show you now in another part of the video because obviously I can't go over this again. Uh, the other thing we did was made up a, um, a one millimeter handle for some copper rod. I didn't have any brass at one millimeter, but I did have some copper. So we got that handle on there on that engine cover door, replacing just the, um, I don't know if we can see it in the instructions, but it was just literally, you see here, it's just a molded on line really. So it's much better to have a, a proper handle there, especially being in 16th scale. Something else that is missing is the towing ice from the back. Um, I'm tempted to not bother putting these on because this is aluminium so they'd have to be glued on with super glue or drilled and screwed or whatever and I really A can't be bothered and B they'll just keep getting knocked off so I'm not going to bother doing them but they are missing they should be here they're missing um, so we painted up these are the hubs for the uh, sprockets these are the um, idler parts they go in here in these holes here and then we've got the air intakes the air filters and they're going to go into these bigger holes here and we've got these um, you can see in here we've got these plastic parts in here so you basically slot them through from the inside like so and then glue those into them so it's a way of sort of gluing them in with plastic cement We've got the engine cover here, which is supposed to go on with rubber cement. And again, these are supposed to go on with rubber cement. And then once we've done all that, the next part is actually fitting the tracks. Now, as I explained before I deleted the video, I'd like to try and add some sort of realistic effect to the tracks. Let me just grab the tracks a second to show you. OK, so as we can see, we've got the tracks here and they're kind of a, a sort of metallic silver grey plastic. And to me, they look extremely plasticky. It looks like actually these ends are metal. What I may do is actually give these a light brushing or light brushing, a light airbrush with the um, MRP tire rubber. You see here when it's when it's not stirred, it's purple on the top. But once you give it a shake, it becomes grey. <laughs> So, um, and it's white in the bottom, which is very clever. But um, the reason I say MRP is it seems to stick very, very well to metal. Um, and the thing is, we don't want it to stick really, really well. We want it to get worn off in certain areas 
so that you kind of get that metallic look. Like on these pads here, we want it to wear off on the top of them, but I'd like the track to have some sort of darker appearance than this grey plastic. Um, I'm not sure those horns are very nice either. There, yeah, um, really I should get some metal aftermarket tracks I guess, but uh, not I'm going to bother on this kit because the, the, the rest of the kit is very, very simplified. It's not, um, in my opinion, it's not really worth spending the, the extra money on. Um, it's a bit like the Land Rover build I'm doing, the, the CC01 chassis from Tamiya. It's not the best off-road chassis out there and not really worth, you know, spending a lot of money on to, to improve it off-road when you can get, you know, much better off-road performing RC chassis out of the box. So don't really want to spend money on metal tracks. Um, so I'm going to use these, but I'm going to try and improve them, I think, because to me they just look, they just look fake. You know, and against these highlighted and washed wheels, I just don't think they're going to look good at all. So I'll do some, I'll do some reference and um, referencing and, and see what we need. But um, basically, the next bit is going to be all about getting these parts fitted, and then once they're fitted, we'll give it another coat of paint. Main reason for giving another coat of paint is to get some depth of paint on here. There's also a hair in there. I think it's a dog hair from Jess. So thanks, Jess. Um, so when that's dry, we'll, we'll sand that out and then paint it again. Um, and also on the sides here, we've got a little bit of witnessing of the, the Mr. Surfacer. It's not that important because you're looking at it. Got it stuck on blue tack. You're kind of looking at it from the side. Well, it's upside down. You're looking at it from the side and you can't sort of see most of it because it's covered up by the, the actual upper hull anyway. But I just wanted to, you know, show you about using Mr. Surfacer to correct mold seams and stuff. So, um, but that was a waste of time because I then went and deleted it. So, um, there we are for that now. What I'll do is I'm going to relax now and have a beer and watch some videos or a bit of TV or something. And I'll finish this part off, part 17, on Thursday morning. Um, and then it'll go out for you on Thursday evening. It may be a short one, but... Um, Today I've had emails asking me if we're getting a video today. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I've, I've, I've learned my lesson. I have basically said that I would actually try and get a video up every day of this. But hopefully you as modellers will understand when you start using fillers and sprue goo and Mr. Surfacer and paint and stuff, you have to give it a certain amount of time, time to dry. You may need to add a second coat, then you need to give it that time to dry again. It's like this, you know, I've, this, this is... This here is taken about, I don't know, 25, 40 minutes work, but I've had to leave it for about six to eight hours drying in between and sanding and, you know, applying more and then sanding again. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's kind of going to be difficult for me to get a video up every day when we're doing stuff like this. So I'm now going to say I'll get a, try and get a video up every other day and that should stop people emailing me and asking me if they're going to get a video today. So, um, I'm sorry guys, but it's just, you know, um, I've got a life to live as well as, as, as doing this. And, uh, you know, I have my other channel as well. And I'm also trying to rebuild my Land Rover and the weather's gorgeous. And, you know, we're all on lockdown. We're all getting stir crazy and stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I don't get a video every day. Um, I will try to get a video every day, but I'm just going to say I'll get one every other day if I can. Okay, so um, I'll see you in a minute for the rest of this. Okay, so the next morning now and the paint's all dry and we're all ready to get these parts off of our painting jig. And I can't remember if I said or not, but because I lost my initial um, initial few minutes of film, um, or didn't lose, I actually deleted it like a stupid idiot. Um, this is the handle I made from copper rod. Um, I'll show you that because we'll have a lot of those to do on the upper hull, I think. Um, so yeah, you've missed that this time, but next time around. Um, so the objective now is to get all this on here and then we'll get it all, just get another coat of paint on it really, just to blend it all in. Um, because I need to get around the back of there if I can. And you're not going to see it anyway, but um, whatever. So I want to get this on there and get it all painted again, because as I say, I've, I've got that hair in there. And also I've noticed that that side of that handle is uh, is still a bit coppery where I haven't got it fully covered so um 
Back end's all painted again now. If you remember, I filled these holes in on there. So I'm going to use um, five minute epoxy on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to scratch up where we're going to be gluing. Now these here, they go on that way round. So we're going to be sort of gluing in here. So I'll just scratch up there and I'll scratch up there. And this is just to aid the glue to sort of stick because what it'll do, it'll, it will get into the, um, into the scores and sort of bite into them. Uh, and then this piece here across the middle. Right, and what I can do then is just literally just score that up a bit. Just put some grooves in there. Like so. And then a bit on there. And there we go, that's that done. So let's get our five minute epoxy, little post it note, and then we'll give this a, a squeeze. We know the left hand side is always tougher than the right. There we go, it's coming. There we are. Put the lid back on, make sure we get the right way round. Get some more of this, we're almost out. It's bloody good stuff. Um, I think probably the rule of thumb, I think most Gorilla products are um, are good, aren't they? So mix that up nice and thoroughly. I've got way too much here. Sometimes it's good to have too much though because you get a better mix. It's the same when you're when you're casting resin. If you just do like five grams for a tiny, say you're making a part like this. You know, getting a really good mix is um, is not as easy if you sort of mix 50 grams to make all of these parts, you know. So let's put this one on first as we've got all this glue. So we'll just spread that around on there. And then this goes on with these, you can see these extra two tangs on here that aren't on the top. You can see there versus there. They go at the bottom. This is going to go on like so. Just give it a little nudge. There we go, that's on there. And then these go with the actual two bolts at the bottom. So that one's the left hand. So what I'm going to do here is just put some glue in that area there and put some on here as well because that won't show if it oozes out. I have dry fitted these before I painted, so here we go. He says, I dry fitted these before I painted. Of course, now I've got paint in the holes. Could be it doesn't want to go in that, that peg at the back. Doesn't want to go in. It's not a round hole that's going in. So I think I'm going to cut some of that away, like so. And get rid of the plastic. How weird is that? See, big, me and my big mouth. What I'll do is I'll just remove that peg completely. I think it's a combination of the screw head fighting with the roof, but I actually try fitted those and they fitted fine. I think I just cut my finger as well. <coughs> yeah, it doesn't fit now. So to avoid cutting my finger again, I 
just shows you see guys how dangerous it is cutting towards yourself with a knife there we go so we'll get some glue on here you could use super glue for this the risk is with super glue is as I've mentioned before it'd be very brittle to you guys that are watching this all the way through you're probably thinking I keep repeating myself but you must remember that not everyone watches all the videos so we have to consider everybody there we go that's those on so I look around then we're gonna put these exhausts on I think I mentioned before I'll show you again the uh, technique for getting the the rusted finish that's gonna go on like that into there there we go they're on nice and solid now these so did mix too much glue up these air intakes um, they go on with these parts here I can't remember what I've showed you and what I haven't guys so if I'm repeating myself I'm sorry but I, as I say I, I did a load of video and then it got lost I deleted it so they're gonna go over those little C1 parts here so they are going to glue in from behind and that means that our air tanks actually get glued on air tank air filters they're gonna get glued on with um with actual poly cement rather than with um anything else so they're going to be nice and strong so we're going to fit these on with the circular part downwards as you can see and this clamping side to the left so they're going to go on like that so I'm going to take two of these and I'm going to use some of this one the tank is rolling away I'm just going to put a drop of glue in those holes Got plenty in there this is just a different type of tammy extra thin it's just a different manufacturer and it's slightly thicker so we'll put that in there and push that through so that's that locked in place and then this one can go in below So that one locked in place not very good location because the pins are tiny compared to the actual um that glue started to go off so I can't fill that up with epoxy yeah the pins are actually tiny compared to the holes in the um in the round parts so that's better and then the other side what we'll do this time is put these in first So, and then we'll just fill those up with some glue. And then slot that in. Pulling it in and out a bit just to make the glue work. There we go, so that's that in. So that is our rear end done.
Right, so we've now done all of that there. Um, <clears throat> and that's all going to get another coat of paint. You see, these are not holding in here well at all. You see how much play there is in those pins. just not bonding. I think I will get some that's gone off. I'm gonna get some super glue because we'll have the wild action of the liquid cement. This is the wrong way around you should never do this. You should never put super glue on top of on top of poly cement. You should always do the super glue first if you need a locking action. Yeah, I'm not very um, impressed with this at all. It's rubbish, to be quite honest with you. It's the worst I've ever seen from Tamiya, to be quite honest. I know we're off camera, guys. I'm sorry. I don't know why they couldn't just put a couple of screws from inside. That would have been absolutely fine. Um, strange but then I suppose it is was it 46 years old the design so I think what I will do is put a clamp on there if I can get a peg to reach nope uh, get this one on one side, just clamp that together, and then we'll get this one on the other side. Sorry, guys, if you're squeamish with blood, just switch off. I need to get this video done, right. So that's our rear end done. Now I was just going to go on now and paint it, but now I need to wait for the glue to dry because of those awful fits. So the next thing to do is going to be the tracks. And as I said, I think I want to give them a coat of paint um, to stop them having this plasticky look. So I'm going to do that next. Moving back to this one here, um, <clears throat> as you can see now, we've got these all glued on. I've got those holes moved over, so I'm happy there. What I want to do now is look at the welds. Now, Right, there are a million and one ways you can do welds, and I'm going to give it a go with this. Now, this is Tamiya. Um, this is to show you a fresh tube. It's basically this one. Tamiya basic putty. It's just their normal filler. There's all sorts of different fillers you can get. You could use anything. The one I wouldn't recommend is like the Vejo one. I wouldn't recommend this one, any of these plastic putties, because I'm sure they're just tile grout. They don't actually bond to the plastic at all. So, um, you're much better off with these solvents so get some on a piece of paper like so or a piece of card or whatever and i'm going to use a two mil drill just to put some down in here into this gap like so it doesn't have to be neat and tidy you can do it any old how okay so we've got some in there now just smooth that out and then we can come along with the drill and just move the drill along and get like a welded look to it. Okay, and we can wipe away any excess in there. We can get a cotton bud, wipe it away if you want to. Again, it doesn't need to be amazingly neat and tidy because we're going to be going in afterwards and doing a texture. You can see what I'm doing here is just jabbing the drill in like that. And what I'm doing there is using the drill to actually scrape the excess away from the side into the weld. 
Okay, so there you go. Now this is, I wouldn't recommend this on a 35th scale because it's too small and fine. With a 35th scale I would be tempted to use Mr. Surfacer or um, plastic rod melted down with um, solvents. Okay, so there we go. So that's that one done. If you want to soften the look of it a bit, get some of your it extra thin. Just brush it over the top. And as you can see what it does, it thins it down. And you can brush it around like so. That softens the edge. I want to break down the edge there. Okay, so then I would suggest using a an extra a spare bottle, put some in there because um, the filler does get into the brush, and then we can come on again with our drill, put our weld marks in, over the top. And there we are. That cut will not heal up. Right. There you go. You can see that there. That's your first pass. And then afterwards, what you can do if you want to um, soften it up or make it harder, you can come in with some um, extra thin. You could brush over it with some Scotch Bright. You must remember with modelling, it's not a science, it's an art, and you're in control. You're totally in control all the time. So that's a bit dry down there, so I'm just going to soften it up a little. A little bit of extra thin, just in that little local area. And then clean the drill off, get rid of the excess. There we are. Just like that. Okay, hope you can see that. And once that's had a coat of Mr. Surfacer on it, because we're going to do all the textures, um, then it you know be a lot less less harsh. Those, those wells look very harsh, but you want them to look a little tatty, as it were, because because they were they. Um, I think they used basically arc welding um, and I think it was very very basic I know I've, I've got a 44 Jeep and some of the welds on that are the trouble is you can't tell if it's been done after the war or, or before but some of the welds they just look like a, a great big lump of solder you know um, like if you look at the, the Sherman tank around the upper edges of the hull you know it kind of looks like a a MIG welder that's been on about a thousand amps with, with a load of wire coming out. It's just making a great big pool of weld and has no sort of real shape or or structure, which is why, you know, using this drill to make the rings, the sort of ringlets in the weld there is a bit harsh. But you want to go a bit harsh because when you go over it, you can always take it back. So that's that softened down. Clean off our drill and then scrape. Scrape the filler in from the side, scrape it down from the top. <clears throat> and all the time it's starting to dry out and get a bit sticky and tacky. Pull some around there. There 
we go. I've put a bit too much on here to be honest. Scrape some of that away. It's good, really, because you now you're getting to see that you know you don't need to pan it. You got too much. It doesn't really matter. Just scrape some away. Go back in with the drill. Rework the weld. You know, really, this sixteenth scale stuff is great to practice on because you need a lot more finesse on the thirty-fifth scale. Now this here, you can see this is all starting to go off a bit. So I'll take a drop of extra thin. And just drip it on there. And then you can see it's gone all thinner like again. There we are. And also the other thing you're doing, if you, I've just, I've literally just thought of this. If you're thinning it with extra thin, when you put it on the plastic, it's going to bite a lot better. Which is what I'm saying, these water-based fillers <clears throat> that a lot of people use, I really don't rate them. Um, I'm sure they're just tile grout because they they don't kind of bond to the plastic, they don't etch into the plastic, they just sit on the surface. So if I use that filler on there, it would just peel off. Um, well, not so much on there because it's got a texture to it, but if I put some on there, try to sand it, it would just peel off. Which is the the big thing in the model world is some you know these solvents and that they're not good for you they're not nice for you to breathe they're apparently if you get some on your skin your hand will drop off and all these water based products are really really safe but unfortunately they're not very good um, you kind of you have to find that balance of you know is it going to hurt me is it going to kill me. If I take precautions, am I going to live through this exercise? And the other end of the scale is, if I use this product, I can actually drink it <clears throat> and rub it on my hands and paint my nails with it, and I'll be absolutely fine. However, my model will be rubbish. <laughs> so, well, not your model will be rubbish, but uh, the paint won't stick very well and the filler will fall out. There we go, that's something there representing welds. Um, probably not the best tutorial in the world because it went wrong, but um, to all intents and purposes, that is my process for getting those welds in around those towing eyes. And I'm sure a million people will respond with that's not how you do it, this is how to do it. Well, if that's the case, then fine. I'm more open to ideas, but please don't tell me I'm doing it wrong. Unless you want to do a video to show me how to do it better. Right. There we go, that's them done. As you can see, they're not particularly neat and tidy, but I don't want them to be. I want them to be fairly rough because as I say, we'll be going over mix the surfacer and adding some texture around the area, and um, that's gonna really sort of knock it back, soften it back. So that's that done. So I think we'll call that a day for part 17. I think we've seen enough. Um, off camera, I will go on and just um, 
repaint all this again on the back here um, and I'll have a look to see if those exhausts need to be done or not um, and then part 18 we'll be covering the tracks and getting this done I think um, and as I say uh, I, I've tried and tried to do one a video every day and I shall try to keep up but guys please don't email me as if you know I've sort of let you down if I don't produce a video every day because we're in the stages as I say painting drying filler drying and everything I mean I can't do anything with this now for another couple of hours at least so and then when I'll paint it I can't touch it again for another couple of hours so by then we're into tea time um, you know and, and, and that's the way it's gonna go now until we get back into modeling and plastic and I guess the electronic side of things it's gonna that's the way it's gonna go we're gonna be waiting for stuff to dry and and that so getting a video every day is, is not um, practical just before you email me just think to yourself if you were building it would you be able to get back on it every single day and also live your life and do other stuff as well so um anyway sorry for moaning but uh, you know some, some people ask a question and some people sort of almost um, I, I want to use my words carefully but some people almost sort of you know what are you bloody playing at you, you, you promised us a video and we haven't got one <laughs> they don't say that directly but that's how it comes across so I'll um I'll see you all soon guys and uh, stay safe and um, happy modeling bye for now